the tools you will need to get into this device are a P2, a T3, and a T2. If I remember correctly, the T2 is for the microphone button. You also will want a pair of tweezers or something really thin to get in and pop up these buttons. Yes, that's what those more marks are from. I was in a really big hurry to get the water out. Um, you'll need that and. And besides the tweezers, you're also gonna want a guitar pick or something thin and plastic. So once you get your tweezers in underneath there and pop up the button, you can work this around. And same with these. I also used um, a plastic spudger like this. They also are known as a uh, black stick, but you get it up and then you can get underneath there, especially with the volume button. It was really good for that to get underneath there. Uh, you just catch it the edge with a tweezer and pop it open and you get it in. It will bend your tweezer, unfortunately, but if you're in a hurry, you're in a hurry. And this is the metal pry tool that I partially used when I was getting into here. I used that and I also used a Jimmy tool as well. Um, you can get one of these cheaper than what iFix it sells. You can get them for like a buck, especially from AliExpress. You can buy them in bulk for like, I don't know, like five bucks for five or something, I don't know. But anyways, like I got that in there and I was prying up on that, of course, with it all disassembled. Um, now it's all put back together, but anyways, yeah. Okay, so here's what the parts look like. Uh, I have a Apple TV remote 4K 2021. These are the two screws that will be found in this bottom plate. These three screws are found within the motherboard. There will be, if I remember correctly, two here for your microphone Siri button. And then there will be one right here in this uh, hole as well. And that's holding in that whole motherboard. And then these other screws are what hold your motherboard onto this plastic housing. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, actually, no, I'll get to that now. So, those screws hold this motherboard to this housing. I took this apart because it got water damage oh, really quick. These are what the buttons look like out of it. Here's what those buttons look like on the back side, just in case you guys need to know that. While I'm here, I may as well show you the home button, or the power button too. This is what the power button looks like out. I think I might have bent the back legs on it. I'm not sure. I don't think that I did. Um, if you guys want to put this back in, what I've found messing with it is you can you can put your power button in through the top, but the easiest way is to put it in through the bottom. I'm going to put a piece of tape over it to hold it in place while I insert the board. If this works, this thing was dropped in some water, so I don't know if it'll work. I let it air out. Um, I was in a really big hurry to get this apart, and that's why I marred it up. Because I was in such a big hurry, and for some reason, Apple thought it was such a great idea to put it in the way that they did. And not have access to the battery to shut it off. Um, but yeah. I found an iFixit teardown guide that uh, showed how to take this apart. That's how I knew how to take out the buttons. That's how I knew that this came out the top instead of the bottom. Um, but they didn't show the power button. So I thought you guys should know that that power button, you just keep it in there. Um, try not to let it snag on anything as you push the board out. And then once it comes out, that button will probably fall out. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this board back on here, plug it in, test it, and hope that it works. I'll let you guys know in just a moment. Really quick, turns out I was wrong. This third screw here that I said was necessary to take it out, it is not. It is just part of the motherboard. Um, you just need to take out the two screws to get out that third button. And, yeah. Um, I'm gonna plug it in and let you know how it goes. Okay, so far no luck. I just barely plugged it back in. Took it in another room and tried to hit the power button, didn't work. I had the trackpad hooked up to see if that would do anything, and that didn't seem to help at all either. So, now I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it needs these ground lugs to make contact with the case in order to function, kind of like a flashlight. So I'm going to try that next, and I'm also going to try to clean out this connector. It looks like it's got some gunk in it. 
So one more time, just in case any of you guys need to see this before I put it back in, this is what the motherboard looks like. These are some of the buttons, uh, the magic uh, touchpad, trackpad, whatever you want to call it. Connector, the microphone, Siri connector, which on the back of the PCB actually is where that makes contact from move against those two pogo pins. Uh, you got your battery here, of course, and your charge port. And then you flip it on over, and you got your speaker. At least I think that's a speaker that could be part of the battery. Um, anyways, so I'm going to get the rest of this put back together, and I'll let you know how it goes. Just to let you guys know really quick, um, I just barely took a look, and I realized that this is the battery connector, this is the charge port connector. So I had them backwards. I plugged in the charge port. It didn't work. But I plugged in the battery connector instead, and now I can turn on and off the TV. Of course, I don't have anything else hooked up. So if it doesn't work after this point, and I hook up, say, like this magic trackpad, and it quits working, then I know that that magic trackpad is um, destroyed by the liquid, and it won't uh, and it won't work. And I'll have to find a different one. But I'm gonna try it, see where we get. But I just thought I'd let you know about that. Um, yeah. Okay, another update. So, I... It was... It is working. It was working. I don't know what you'd want to call it. Uh, it would turn on and off the TV with the power button. I didn't use b these buttons until my uh, my wife told me that it was short... Or that the TV kept shutting off, and I didn't think that was me that was shutting it off. So, I went in there and started messing around, and it kept shutting off about every three or four minutes. You'd turn it on... You could go into the settings, see that the remote was connected, and all of a sudden, it just shut off. So I thought, well, maybe it's because this uh, trackpad isn't connected. So I hurried and connected the trackpad, went back in, and uh, it worked for a good five minutes or so. It's still working, I think. So um, it, if you're having an issue, it could be that your trackpad as well. I'm going to reassemble it and see what happens. Worst comes to worst, if it keeps freaking out, just hit forget this remote. Um, in your settings, if you can get there fast enough. If not, you're going to have to disassemble it and unplug the battery, which again is that connector right there. I'm not going to be able to reconnect it or uh, disconnect it or reconnect it. I, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm getting it back together. Um, looking at this, <laughs> yeah, you can tell I was in there. Um, like I said, I was, in a, I was in a bit of a hurry to get it open. I was afraid of all the water damage. It looks like Apple did coat the board a little bit with um, some coating to help. Which is a great idea on their part and on our part. Um, yeah, so the Siri button won't work unless your trackpad is plugged in. And this power button is a pain in the butt to try to get straight. I dropped it a couple times and it took me a while to try to find it. So I figured instead of fighting it, I would just um, leave it crooked. Um, it's your remote, so you decide what you want to do. I ended up using a piece of tape to uh, hold it on and then push it in. When you go to put this in, I didn't video it, unfortunately. But when you go to put this in, right where the Siri button is, underneath your trackpad here, you'll find out that there's a little cutout right where that speaker goes. Or right where the button goes, I'm sorry. Where that little module goes. And that's where you're going to have to put your power button in. You're going to hold it upside down. You're going to put your power button in. You're going to hold it looking up above or from underneath. And you're going to get it lined up. And you're going to put your tape on it. And then you're going to push from the back side and the front side to get that tape to seat real good. And then you're going to push it in the rest of the way. After you get it pushed in the rest of the way, make sure that this doesn't go in like, you know, um, pushed in or anything. And then you're going to go on ahead and I, I'm going to leave it like that, unfortunately, but I don't really want to mess with it more than I have to. Um, I just barely tested it. The trackpad and stuff worked. The Siri button works. Um, I didn't test out the microphone yet. Uh, if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. Um, but this trackpad wasn't working when I first plugged it back in again. And so what I did is shut off the TV, shut it back on, or turn it back on, and uh, with the power button here, of course, and and then it worked. So now I'm just going to pop in the rest of these buttons. I'll show you how easy they should pop in. So you got your volume up, your volume down. All right. 
I'm going to show you how easy these buttons pop in. They're going to make a liar out of me. Okay, just like that, and then you're going to go through and do each one. And I'm going to show you what it's like to put it on the bottom plate, and then you'll be done. Also, about this power button. It is fun. Fun. What happened is, I mean, I talked about it earlier in the video about trying to get it back in and using a piece of tape and stuff, which worked. But the notch for the button right here is where you have to put it in as you're pushing in the board. There, You're going to come across where that notch overlaps right here. And you have to get it in that little hole and then get it in this little hole and get it lined up. And same thing with taking it out. You cannot take out the board and have the power button in the way. You have to drop it out where that button hole is. And same thing putting it back in. You can't have the power button in first. You have to put it in right where that necessary button is. It's a pain, but it is what it is. I mean, we all bought the Apple TV and we have to deal with the consequences of having a pretty remote, I guess. Okay, as you see here, that's the bottom plate. Oh, I'm going to put that back where it's supposed to go. And then I'm going to use this P2 to screw in the two screws. Um, I think they're both the same thread length, so it doesn't really matter. Just put them in, make sure everything lines up, make sure that your charging port works. As you see, I got the buttons back on. Um, and again, you'll have some markings on the side from the tweezers, especially if you're in a hurry like I was. And uh, like I said, the power button's a little crooked. And, and it's all marred up, but to save you from having to buy a new TV remote or having to run out in the middle of the night, or you can't run out in the middle of the night, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? So anyways, thanks for watching. Um, let me know if there's anything else that you guys need help with. I thought that this could be very helpful to those of you who needed to tear apart an Apple TV remote but needed a detailed look on the inside. Um, I'll link the iFixit video in the description. Um, to let you guys uh, watch the disassembly. Uh, this was a detailed reassembly, or at least I tried to make it a detailed reassembly. If you guys have any questions, just holler down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. One other thing you could possibly do, uh, if you don't want to disassemble it or if you can't disassemble it, you don't have a screwdriver, where the board is coated at least on this exact specific batch of them, uh, you could tip it to where it's aimed towards the microphone button because all the water should leak out from there, hopefully. Or tip it down, but also then that could get water in your charge port. The best thing to do, though, is to just take it apart to begin with. If you can or if you can't, take it to someone who can. Um, other than that, though, I, I don't know how else to help you. Um, other than trying to drain all the water out. Uh, because eventually it will find somewhere to corrode somewhere in that rather it's the charge port or anywhere and then it'll short it out so I would just recommend trying to take it apart but again if not have it turned like that or maybe try to get the water out of the buttons or something or maybe pop one of the buttons off I guess and try to get in there with some canned air or something I don't know but anyways best thing to do is take it apart what do you do if you drop your Apple TV remote in some water? Mine was dropped into about this much water. What I did is I tore it apart. What you do to tear it apart is you get tweezers underneath each one of these buttons, pop them off, take the two P2 screws out of the bottom plate there, and the plate comes off. And then after that, you're and you're also going to get tweezers underneath this, pop it up. There'll be a little connector. you got to get underneath that and pop it up without shorting it out. So like with maybe a plastic spudger like this. Then after that, you're going to go underneath this edge with a pry tool, such as this. You're going to go on ahead and get in there and pry up on it. That's why mine looks like it was chewed down on. And you're just going to try to get that up the best you can. And then once you get it up enough to get hold of it with your fingers, you're going to have to grab hold of both hands and pull pretty hard. Don't pull so hard that you break it, though. Oh. And then when you get to about the point where the... Hold on. Let me go back. Okay, so what do you do when you drop an Apple TV remote in water? Mine was dropped in about that much water from the top to the bottom of the trackpad. 
what I did is I went on ahead and popped out these buttons with a pair of tweezers and a prey tool to get underneath with it. And then got underneath this with a pair of tweezers and then I went around it with this. Underneath there, there is a connector that you're going to need to undo. And I just used something plastic like this or this to get underneath it and get it out, right? So then after that, um, right where your Siri button is, you're going to see the button itself uh, past this metal part. And so you, there's two screws there. They're uh, T2s or T3s. I think they're T3s. And you're going to take and you're going to unscrew those two screws and then you're going to take out that uh, button. That's going to be kind of hard, but you got to work it out, get it out. And then when you're done with that and everything's been unscrewed for those two, you're going to go in the back here with, hold on. You're going to go in the back there, just like that with a Jimmy tool or something in there. I use the Jimmy tool because it was thin and strong. Um, this guy kept bending. You're going to get it up to where you can get it just barely enough with your fingers. Don't break it by pulling too hard, but you're going to have to pull pretty hard. And you're going to have to get it to where the cutout for where that button was is where that power button is. Then you're going to drop out that power button, and then you're going to pull the rest of the way out. It will not come out if you have that power button in there. And it won't go back in if that power button's in there. Trust me, I tried. And then you're going to get in the back, and if you watch the rest of the video, you'll see where the battery connector is. You'll unplug the battery connector. And then from there, you're you're gonna be okay as long as there's no, as long as there's not really bad corrosion. And then from there, you can go through and dry it off, or well, don't dry it off with a towel. Terrible idea. Dry it off with compressed air, or let it air dry, or some rubbing alcohol, something like that. Clean it up, especially if you spilled soda on, and that's gonna be a mess and a half for you to clean up. Um. And then after that, yeah. Let it dry. I let mine dry for, I think, one to two days, and then I put it back together. In the meantime, I just used my phone for the remote, and then uh, I put it back together. It is working. Again, that power button is a bit of a pain. You'll have to watch the rest of the video to see that part, but, but uh, yeah, there you go. If my video doesn't make sense on what to do in case it's dropped in any liquid or anything and you don't know exactly how to tear it down, uh, I do have a, a link in the description and uh, at uh, 2 minutes and 38 seconds in the video to go to iFixit's video on their teardown. They just don't explain what to do with this power button. I do. Um, yeah, so if you are in a hurry, I understand. Totally. Go there. I hate to do that to you, though. I hope my video helps. Okay, so update. I guess it's been about a week since this happened last weekend, and it still is working. I haven't had any problems with it. There's been no ghosting or anything so far. Um, me and my wife have pretty much decided that we're going to go on ahead and buy a new remote. I just haven't done it yet. Um, so the story behind it, what happened was, uh, I guess it got dunked into uh, some water, a cup of water, about that far, about that far down from the top. So like this much water or so, and that's the worst spot to get it to with the microphone right there. And so, uh, that's why I was in such a hurry to get it out, and that's why I was in such a hurry to tear it down, is because y you just want to get the water out as fast as possible, right? So, anyways, that's that's what happened to it, and that's why I was tearing it apart, that's why I did it so quickly. That looks like why a beaver got a hold of this, or something chewed on it at least, but, so that's what happened there.